good morning students today we are going to see the biophysiologic methods this is one of the important methods in collecting data and it is very easy method for collecting uh, data related to research so let's see mostly biophysiological measures is used to collect objective data in research so here we are using some kind of equipments uh, either we are using this method alone or we are using with some other methods like checklist uh, questionnaire or uh, some rating scale we are using along with the biophysiologic method mostly we use this method alone when we collect data uh, this method mainly used to study about dysfunction of the subjects any body related function and also to gather information through direct observation for example the subject is having some severe medical problems so during the time we are observing the vomiting level and we are noting the color of vomiting the consistency and also we are noting the quantity of vomiting and also we are noting the cyanosis if any present if uh, the color of the bluish discoloration we are noting and in case of post cardiotomic subjects the delirium the level of consciousness alteration in the attention level that we are noticing and edema if the patient have edema then we observe the edema types and uh, we are observing the characteristics of edema and the wound status the level of wound healing so these things are observed either directly or with the help of some uh, scales we assess the quantitative information like uh, edema uh, the size of the edema can be measured with the edema scales so biophysiological method basically use some equipments to gather data related to body functions physiologic functions to check whether any abnormalities is present or uh, what is the change in the body physiologic function either before intervention or after the interventions now let's see the uh, some more uh, information about biophysiologic method so with this method we gather the data by asking directly to the subjects or we collect sample from the subjects and that we used to study in the laboratory and we gather the required information either in qualitative way or in quantitative uh, measures now let's see the definition this biophysiologic method involves the collection of biophysiologic data from subjects by using a specialized equipment to determine biological and physical status of subjects so with the help of some equipments or instruments we gather biophysiologic activity related information from the subjects so this is called biophysiologic method for example blood pressure which we measure with the help of stethoscope and sphygmomanometer now let's see the common uh, equipments or instruments which we are using in the biophysiologic method so we use the thermometer to record the patient temperature and we use the spectrometer to assess the lung volumes of the patient and we use ecg machine to note the electric conduction in the heart and you know the sphygmomanometer and stethoscope function and also some type of test we carried out in the patients like culture test we also collect specimens like urine specimen csf specimen blood culture during corona period for diagnostic test we are collecting the swab culture from the throat so these things are also example of biophysiologic method of collecting data now the type of biophysiologic method basically two type one is in vivo biophysiologic methods another one is in vitro biophysiologic methods in vivo means we are observing the changes which is taking place inside the body with the help of some equipments that is the measurement is done inside the body like the measures which we directly observe what is happening internally within the living organism through medical or surgical instruments 
Our best example is to measure the blood pressure, we use Spigmo manometer and stethoscope. To check the body temperature, we use uh, thermometer or pulse oximetry is used to measure the uh, ABG, uh, what is the oxygen saturation level. So these things comes under in vivo biophysiologic method. In vitro biophysiologic method where the biological or physiological process are measured outside the organism. For example, we take the specimen from the subject and we take to the laboratory and we do the analysis. That is blood test or cultural test which we do in the laboratory is the example of in vitro biophysiologic methods. Now let us see each thing in detail. First is in vivo biophysiologic method. Already I told you the measurements are directly performed over the organism or study subjects by using specialized instruments or equipments. In other words, it is the measurement of the biophysiologic attributes of the subjects by using an instrument which can then be interpreted by the researcher. So with the help of some instrument, we are studying what abnormality is taking place inside the body. So examples already I told you, BP, Spigma manometer is used and uh, conduction system of the heart is measured with the help of ECG machine and temperature is measured with the help of thermometer. So in vivo biophysiologic method, we are measuring the internal uh, things which is happening inside the body of the subjects. So there are some components related to in vivo measuring instruments. Components of in vivo measuring instrument. First one is stimulus to measure any uh, things inside which is happening inside the body we need a stimulus the stimulus can be either in the electric the external form or it can be in internal form for example in electromyography emg the monitoring system records the stimulus coming from the brain and is passed in nerves and muscles so that reading which is coming from the brain uh, when it passes through the nerves and muscles that we are recording and that is the stimulus. Stimulus can be produced either from the body or uh, that can be produced outside the body. And the subject, mostly the subject or human being, when we use biophysiologic methods, the, from the subject we are taking chemical related information, electrical related information, mechanical information, thermal information. So these things are taken from the subject body for biophysiologic measures the next one is uh, sensory equipment so two types one is transducers and electrodes our body produce various impulses these impulses are recorded with the help of electrodes these electrodes and transducers helps to convert one form of energy into another form the energy which is produced inside our body have different forms like sound form in the light forms in the mechanical form so that can be converted into another form with the help of transducer or electrodes for example the hot sounds which is produced in the sound waves that can be converted into electrical form and it will be displayed in the mechanical form waves and signal conditioning is the next component so example is amplifiers and processors generally two types of signals are produced uh, like we have uh, these sig uh, signals which we want to record we need to magnify the uh, original signals so that it can be recorded very accurately for that we need amplifiers and signal processors for example this electrocardiographic signal is the best example so the amplifiers and the signal processors are used to amplify the desired biophysiologic signals from the transducers. So that is the main function of transducers. So it helps to amplify the signal processor and uh, because of that we can record very, uh, because of this only we are able to record it very accurately. The next uh, component will be display equipment all the things which is happening inside the body we need to see that for that we need a display equipment like computer devices 
So the display equipment converts the electrical energy into visual or auditory outputs. The next one is recording equipment. For research purpose, we need the information that we need to process further all the happenings which is occurring inside the body which we are measuring need to be recorded. This recording uh, will help the uh, researcher or the medical professionals to scrutinize the uh, condition of the body condition of the subject and to analyze the any abnormality if it is present inside the uh, body. Now this is about in, in vivo biophysiologic methods. Now we move on to in vitro biophysiologic methods. Before that uh, already I discussed so common equipments example is thermometer that um, spectrometer uh, ECG machine and a stethoscope and speak manometer. Now let's go to in vitro biophysiologic method. So this is the method of measuring the biophysiologic attributes of the subjects which is carried out through the collection of sample of data related to physical, biochemical and uh, microbiologic, pathologic and anatomic status by using some technical instruments. For example, we collect that sample from the subject and that is sent for laboratory analysis for uh, cult uh, bacteria culture or electrolyte level measurement. So this is the best example of in vitro biophysiologic methods. The samples are collected from the subject and analysis is done outside the human body. This is in vitro biophysiologic methods. So basically we use different measurements in in vitro biophysiologic methods like first one is radiologic measurements. This includes the measurements of the radiologic attributes of the subject such as evaluation of the body tissues by the use of x-rays, CT scan, MRI and positive emission tomography. So radiologic component when we measure, we use radiologic measurements like x-ray, CT scan, MRI and positive positron emission tomography PET. Now next one is biochemical measurement. This includes the measurements of the biochemical attributes of an individual such as hormonal level, blood sugar level, hemoglobin, serum electrolytes, liver function test, renal function test and serum markers like cardiac markers. So these are very useful in measuring the biochemical components of the subjects. Now the next one is uh, microbiologic measurements like tissue culture like we have the bacterial count uh, sorry tissue culture will come in the cytologic measurement we have the bacterial count and uh, cultural study sensitivity tests are done in the microbiology laboratory and next one is the cytologic measurement like tissue culture biopsies are done to find out any uh, abnormal cell growth. So this is the cytologic measurement. So these are all comes under in vitro biophysiologic methods. Now let's move on to the advantages and disadvantages of biophysiologic method. The main advantage is uh, through biophysiologic equipments uh, we get the accurate and uh, data which we are getting is more objective and errors will not be there because of the technological development. The equipments record the very accurate data. Next one is more objective in nature comparing to all other data collection method. In this method, the data which we collect is accurate because directly we are collecting from the uh, subject from the directly from the body. So there is no uh, chance for subjective interpretation here. And uh, third advantage is provide valid measures for targeted variable. So with the help of uh, biophysiologic methods, we gather data and this data can be used for planning the intervention for the targeted variables. For example, the blood sugar level is high in the subject. So we can uh, plan which kind of insulin, what dose of insulin can be given to the particular subject. So it will not be uniform for all the subjects to give same intervention. So the biophysiologic method helps to give variety of measures for the targeted variables. The fourth one is easy access to most of the instruments used for the biophysiological measurements nowadays. 
technology is developed uh, everywhere there is laboratory and uh, easily the test the equipments are available even the equipments are available in online we can purchase and we can use in our home also these are the biggest advantages the disadvantages like uh, for to use the equipments we need to spend more money like the ct scan mri scan and all need more money for the subjects to spend even for coronavirus to confirm the diagnosis we need to spend 4500 for the pcr or we need to have significant amount of training from the uh, researcher knowledge is needs to be developed when you handle such equipments and instruments and also the other disadvantages sometimes when we subject the uh, our research sample to this test they can have fear and anxiety for example ct scan mri scan can create phobia and uh, when we do liver function test or renal function test that can cause anxiety and uh, abnormal fear in the client and next thing is sometimes harmful effects can occur on the participants like rep uh, repeated x-ray uh, leads to radio uh, ra uh, this one uh, side effects related to radiations so these are the biggest disadvantages of biophysiologic methods hope you understood about biophysiological method in collecting data in a next lecture let us see the projective techniques in collecting data thanks for watching this video meet you again take care bye bye